Sisters, let us remember that we are gathered together in the name of the Lord. And the Lord says, Christ said, well, let us remember him when the entrance in, when we led by the fire. Let's Isaiah, Ori Kado, Ori Kano, the Lord born. 
est-ce qu'elle fait Si est-ce qu'elle sent Alors, là, si nous, il veut vous lire à Isaïe ou loi. Et bien, au bout, il y a aussi à ce qu'on peut voir à mon union. L'olio qui est dit, après, j'ai perdu un rang, l'aura, à ce qu'il y a aussi dans la Pelu eno lora ti o gbadun ati otiti a ti adasaka oun yo si si aso opo ti a fi bori gbogbo awon eniyan yo si aso ibanuje ti a fi boju gbogbo orilede kuro oun yo pa ikure titi lai lai oluwa Yahweh, yo no mi je pro, lo ju bobo e niyan. Yo mo e gan, anwo e niyan re pro. Yo mo pro ni bobo agbaye. Ni tori olu ati wibè. Ni ojo nan, ni a o wikpe. Sa a wo, olon wa ni, ni yi. Lati yodo e ni ti a un re ti ibala. Olu a ti a beke le ni li. A wa yo sodun, a wa yo yon. Ni to li pe, o ti ba wala. Ba yi ni, o kwen, i wè ki kanon. Dead people raised. And what sort of body do they have when they come? How foolish. What you sow must die before it is given the new land. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but only a bare grain of wheat, I dare say, or some other kind. It is God who gives it a sort of body that he has chosen for it. And for each kind of seed, its own kind of body. Not all flesh is the same. Not all flesh is the same flesh. There is human flesh. Animals have another kind of flesh. Birds, another. And fish, yet another. Then there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. The heavenly have a splendor of their own. And the earthly a different splendor. The sun has its own splendor. The moon another splendor. And the stars yet another splendor. And the stars differ among themselves in splendor. It is the same too with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, but what is raised is imperishable. What is sown is contemptible, but what is raised is glorious. What's, what is sown is weak, but what is raised is powerful. What is sown is a natural body, and what is raised is a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is a spiritual body too. So, the first man, Adam, as the scripture says, became a living soul. And the last Adam has become a life-giving spirit. But first, the natural body, not the spiritual one that came only afterwards. The first man, being made of earth, is earthly by nature. The second man is from heaven. The earthly man is the pattern for earthly people. The heavenly man for heavenly ones. And as we have all borne the likeness of the earthly man, so we shall all bear the likeness of the heavenly one. And the Lord bless his words in Jesus' name. Eh yara Awa ko fe ki eje alai mo kan Ni pa ti awon oku Ko ye ke ba mi je bi awon alumiran Awon ti ko ni reti Bi awa ti gbagbo pe Jesu Dio ti ku Dio si jindi Back on now, me for I want you to soon. You know, Jesus. 
Olorun yo mu o pada wa pedu re Eyin na ni ohun ti awa ni lati so fun ni lori oro oluwa Awa ti a ti wa laye Awa ti a ku seyin de wiwa oluwa Awa ko ni saju awon ti o ti sun Nigba ti a ba pa se pelu ohun ko lori awon angeli ati ipe olorun Nigba ni eni oluwa ti kalara re yo so kale lati orun wa ati awon oku ti won ti wa ninu kristi yo koko jindi na ina ni awa ti awa laye ti asi wa leyin awa yo dapo mo won ti asi pe wa soke lori ikuku lati pade oluwa doju somo be ni awa yo wa pelu oluwa titi lai nitori na ni ki e ma fi oro won yi tu ara yin ninu eyi ni oro oluwa o si enikan ninu wa to wa laye fun ara re bi ko ti si eni ti o nku fun ara re bi a ba wa laye a wa laye fun oluwa bi a ba si ku aku fun oluwa nitori na ninu iye ati ninu iku a wa je ti oluwa nitori kristi ti fu o si pada sinu iye lati de lati le di oluwa gbogbo oku ati alaye ni ti re ni ti re e se ti iwo fi n dajo fun arakunrin re ati iwo na e se ti iwo fi n pegan arakunrin re ani gbogbo wa ni yo farahan ni waju idajo olorun nitori ati ko we re pe mo fi iye mi bura ni oluwa wi gbogbo ikun ni yo kunle ni waju mi si gbogbo ahon yo si yin olorun logo olukuluku wa ni yo salaye ara re ni waju olorun eyi ni oro olorun for the happy repose of the soul of mama dokas i know fire me we are doing this because we believe that our prayer here can help Mama Dokas wherever she is now. For prayer is the best gift you and I can offer for the dead. There is nothing we could do that would be more helpful and beneficial to her. Deaths no doubt evoke different types of emotions among humans. The emotions displayed by an individual most often is a function of the relationship between the individual and the dead. Is the dead a member of the immediate family or that of the extended family? Is the dead a friend or an enemy? Remember when a president, the head of state, one of the head of state in Nigeria died, and everybody on the street, drinking and thanking God that he has gone. Oh, whether the debt is a debt or a creditor, you are owing somebody. Suddenly, it's a huge amount of money, and you discover that the person is the type. It's very secretive. Person just discover that the person just uh, you had the news that he's dead. You will be jubilating. While the relationships will be sad. Whatever the relationship may be, one thing is sure. People are either happy or sad when someone dies. And I speak here this evening, I have no doubt in my mind that all those who came in contact with Mama Dokas fire me during a sojourn on earth 
are happy that this gem has returned to our Creator. They are happy not because he was no longer useful to them, but because he had exceeded the biblical age of 70, 70 years, or because he had become a burden to her children and members of her immediate family. Rather, they are happy because she has fulfilled the purpose of which she was brought into existence by a creator. The Catechism of the Christian Doctrine, published by the Catholic Truth Society, gave three reasons why God created man. The first is to know God, second, to love Him, third, to serve Him. Without missing words, Amado Kasfayemi was a believer who had not only intellectual knowledge of God, but she also experienced an established personal relationship with Him. She recognized God as a creator and the Lord Jesus as a redeemer. In recognition of the love the Father bestowed on her, our matriarchs strive to obey the commandments of God. For the Lord Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Her love for God was further displayed in the services she rendered to her neighbors. First, she served her husband and children. And as the wife of a lay leader, Baba Bell St. Martin's Catholic Church, Isha Ikiti, she was a pillar of support to her husband in rendering services to the people of God. Looking back at the type of life led by Mama, one begins to understand the serene disposition of Mama Fahemi towards the end of her life when she was down with sickness. Like Job, in her second reading this evening, she was not afraid to die. An indication that she was prepared to return home. She also believed that her Redeemer lives. And that after her awakening, her eyes would be gazing on no stranger. The question I would like to ask you today, my dear brothers and sisters, is this. Should death knock at your door right now, are you prepared to go? I can hear yes. For those of us in the service of ministering to the dying, experience has shown that a good number of people are usually sad when they realize the fact that they may soon breathe their last. They cry, not because of the physical pain associated with sickness, but most often because of the realization that they have failed to live up to expectation in terms of the reasons why the Creator brought them into existence. Therefore, the death of Mama Dokas I know fire me presents us with an opportunity to assess our lives in terms of whether we know God, whether we love Him, and whether we are serving Him. Let me remind you, my dear friends, that the things that prevent us from knowing God Loving Him and serving Him only have temporary values, power, wealth, or positions. No matter the position you occupy today or the money you have, you will want to leave them to answer the call of your Creator. Instead of allowing them to be obstacle on your way, she allowed them to become means of achieving the purpose for which we were created. Let me remind you of the words of St. Paul in his letter to the Romans. All of us will have to stand in front of the judgment seat of God. Each of us will have to give an account of himself. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. Mark the word of St. Paul, he says, all of us, which means, whether you are young or old, male or female, rich or poor, the account we are going to give 
will be based on what we have done with the gift of life bestowed on us by God. It does not really matter whether you, whether you die as a young person or as an octogenarian. For the success of an actor depends not on the number of scenes he or she appeared in a play, but how well the individual performed the role assigned to him, even if it be for one minute. So you should ask yourself at this moment, are you prepared to stand before the judgment seat of God? If you appear, what will be your fate? If you have been living your life in such a way as to be like St. Paul, the enemy of the cross, then you have to have a rethink today. Mama Fayemi has gone. She's not coming back again until we meet on that last day before Christ. If you will ever appear before the throne of judgment, will you be sad or be happy? The one that will behold, will it be a stranger to you or a friend? Obviously, the one you mingled with, the one you have been relating with while on earth, will be the one you are going to meet. If you have been whining and dining with the devil, then be stress assured that he will receive you into the covenant of his own. And if you have been whining and dining with Christ, Christ will also receive you to himself. Why you are still having the opportunity now? God will want you to ensure that you live in order to fulfill the purpose for which God has brought you into existence. Do not forget that you are a visitor here on earth. You only have a temporary existence here. If you live well, you will go and have a permanent abode where Christ has promised, where he has prepared a place for us. He has assured us that there are many mansions in his father's house. And so there is no need for anyone to be afraid whether he's going to secure an apartment there or not. All you need to do is to live your life in accordance with the reason why God has called you into this life. And if you fail to do so, you will also die and you will go to where you are going to suffer eternal punishment. But I pray for each and every one of us here that the Lord will continue to guide and direct us so that as we continue our journey here on earth, we will remain focused and then live following the example of people like my man Fayemi who gave us an example of authentic Christian life and then in union with the grace of God We'll be able to live so that one day we we'll remain united with Christ where we are going to rejoice with him in his father's kingdom forever and ever. Let me use this opportunity to thank the children of I pray that your own children will never abandon you in your old age. I'm particularly saying this because some people see the aged parents as problem to be solved instead of seeing them as gifts to be cherished. What we see whenever we go for communion to the sick and the aged can be very, very disturbing. Some are imprisoned by their own children and their crime is that they are staying too long alive. One day, I visited someone, a very, very old woman, I've been going there for some time. But each time you discover that the door is always locked against this woman. She will remain inside the room. They will give her both breakfast, lunch, and dinner separately in the room, and they will all. She will be abandoned in the home. Until evening, the woman asked me one day, Father, what is my offense? I want to go. I think I've overstayed. Look at me. 
alone in the room all day. They don't care about me any longer. And I asked the woman, are you going to take your life? She said, no. I said, trust in God. This is the time for you to remain close to him. But my dear friends, the day this woman died, the first thing I discovered was that they brought me an invitation card, a very, very beautiful one for that matter. And I asked, where are these people? Where did they get this type of money? Where did they get this type of money? And on the day of the funeral, you wouldn't believe it. I saw different kinds of Ashebi, about five or six. And then I asked myself, how I wish these people be able to show this woman that they loved her while she was alive. Now she died in pain. And now these people are celebrating. What are they celebrating? I know that you all will have an old person in your house. Whether your parents, whether they are still alive, take time to take good care of them. Whatever you sow, you are going to reap. The old people deserve our care. They deserve our compassion. Let us be generous to them. Let us realize that they are part of the responsibility that God has given to us. As we pray for Mama Jokas Fahemi and the children, we also pray for the souls of all the faithful departed, that through the mercy of God, they will all rest in peace. Amen.